Hi. Things aren't going real well these days, and a lot of folks have to work at home. They're unable to use their regular workstation at work. Today we're going to go through some of the ways that you can assist yourself to make yourself feel better at home. I'm Bob Smetanka, physical therapist at San Alfonso's Regional Medical Center in Boise. You may have already gone online to look at some ways how you can assist yourself with your workstation. A good place to go is a National Institute of Health site, the Computer Workstation Ergonomics Self-Assessment Checklist. In fact, this is very, an excellent chart for you. It's a National Institute of Health on Computer Workstation Ergonomics Self-Assessment Checklist. That's for you. So everything we're going to talk about today, your review or sheet will be right here. You'll have this available to you. Go online, easy to find, National Institute of Health, Ergonomics Self-Assessment Checklist. So first of all, why are you even watching this? Because someone told you to watch it? Or you have some aches and pains that you want to get rid of? So what are those aches and pains? Let's talk about that. A few things can happen if you're not set up properly. You can get neck pain from a position like this or like this. Upper back pain can also occur from these positions. The whole mechanics of the body is what you're paying attention to. And then we have at the low back, also we can get pain from how, our, how we're situated. Now if you're gonna be in front of your computer just for a few minutes, you can almost take any posture position you want. But it's that prolonged positioning. I know some of you may be there. I've talked to some folks where they were there for hours without getting up and taking a break. That's how you can end up with a problem. So we talked about the back and the neck problems, shoulder problems, muscles up through the neck. The farther the arms are forward, the greater tension you have on this muscle. And you can even test it out yourself. If the arm is dropped to the side, this muscle is rather relaxed. The farther you push it out, you feel it tighten up against your fingers. And over a period of time, you're going to end up with some pain and some discomfort. We also have with extended wrists. You may have wrist and forearm pain. From having a wrist up like this in too long of a position, based on keyboard positioning or mouse positioning. Likewise, with the hands being turned in or out, you can end up with wrist pain. So we get pain through the wrist. We get pain through the elbow muscles here, especially the ones that extend or pick up the wrist. Uh, those are the major areas of involvement. Of course, we can also have some eye strain, uh, which would add, I guess, some, to some neck and back pain if you're looking forward. So you need to make sure your eyes are working properly. Check with your optometrist. We also want to keep in mind, related to the eyes, that the eyes weren't meant to stay wide open for a long period of time. We, that can contribute to some dry eyes, some discomfort. We'll talk about how to position the monitor so you won't have the eyes lids completely wide open all the time. So those are, I think, right, I probably hit all the reasons of why you're here and uh, to find out more about proper position, proper alignment. It all comes, out, comes down to how the body is aligned. So let's take a look at what postures and positions can contribute to those painful patterns. Probably the most astonishing thing I've ever seen was a, a fellow at Micron. I walked into his office, and what do I see? I see this, and this was serious stuff. He wasn't joking. He was like this, and he asked me, uh, why do I hurt? Uh, I was rather surprised by that, and after I picked my jaw from the ground, um, I told him, why he hurts. Let me get my leg down here. So neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, arm pain, all those things came in. After we went through the proper setup, he was a very happy, happy fellow and promised that he would never take that position again. Uh, I think he probably never took that position again. So the most important thing for proper alignment position at your station where you're working at home it all starts with the chair. It all starts with support of the body. Now, hopefully you have a chair that will meet all these needs. And what are your needs? Ideally, a chair that's on casters or rollers that you can move in position. We want the chair to be able to go up and down. We want the seat pan that can go forward and backward to support the full back of the thigh, but not 
push the lower leg forward and put pressure behind the knee to cause discomfort or pain. We want adjustability to all of that. We want adjustability to how much support you get at the low back. There should be a knob to control that pressure also. Proper setup in the chair, proper setting of the chair, is how you really want to start out in setting up your total workstation at home. And then let's take a look at, if you don't have that perfect chair, what are some of the modifications you can probably do? You can probably figure some of this out yourself, but let me just show you some ideas that some people like. So you find a desk in a house, or you're already at your desk, and you have a chair that doesn't allow you to move up and down. This isn't a very good position here. You're really low. Um, we'll talk more about the monitor place, but that's not bad, but you have to reach up for the keyboard and for the mouse. This isn't your best position. The best or better position for this, if the chair doesn't move, you need to sit on something to raise you up a little bit. You can have a couple books, some pillows to raise you up to make it a little bit better for you. I should probably even have another book here. I want to have the elbows at about 90 degrees level with your desk. In fact, maybe even have it such that's even a little bit higher. So I would want, really want another book on this to raise me up. So you have the seat height adjusted, but your feet don't touch the floor. You need to get something under there, a footrest, a book, a ream of paper, to get your feet flat and supported. You don't want them hanging down. Let's take a look at positioning of the keyboard. In the situation we have here, I probably could get away with having the keyboard up here, but ideally, I may even want a little bit lower. There are trays that office supply companies have that you can attach to your desk that would allow a position where you are going to have the wrist straighter. In fact, you'd even want that keyboard tilted down a little bit. We want to stay away from having the wrist cocked up like this because that can contribute to your pain. So ideally a position similar to this. Maybe you can even, some people can even do this with the keyboard supported on their, on their lap, on their knees. If you can get away with that, you feel comfortable and happy with that, go ahead. Now again, most of these positions, you're going to do the best you can with what you have. So we're trying to go through what's the absolute perfect, and you can modify and work from there. So we're going to take the keyboard then, if we are able to use the desktop. This may be okay as long as you support. What you don't want is you're going to be hanging down here. Sometimes you may get a, a wrist rest to put across here if you need that support. But we don't want pressure on this part of the wrist. We want to be able to also have the mouse on the same level as the keyboard. We don't want to have the keyboard on one level and the mouse on another level. And as I mentioned before, the farther you reach forward, the greater this muscle has to work. And you could get fatigue from here and or headache because this muscle passes up into the back of the, the neck. So comfortable positioning with the keyboard in front of you. There's more than one option you have depending on your situation and what your body will be happy with. You'll know soon enough what, what you need to do. The use of your mouse can also be a very personal thing. Um, a simple mouse similar to this uh, may not work for you. Some people like a trackball, if trackballs are, are still available for you to use. But find the mouse that works best for you that feels most comfortable on your hand and wrist. You may even need a support around the mouse to help support your wrist, depending on your whole setup again and how you're in the chair and how you relate to the desk. Let's look now at the monitor and where that needs to be positioned. The monitor should be positioned such that the eyes are pretty much near the top of the screen. You want to be able to have it such that you're looking down to the monitor. You don't want to be looking up. Depends also on what, what your eyeglasses are. If you have bifocals, you don't want to be tilting the head and neck back and looking at the monitor. Hopefully, this is adjustable for you. So for myself, with my 
progressive glasses. This is my key area here. That works well for me down there. I don't want to spend my whole day at my computer with my eyeballs, my eyes completely open. We can get some dry eyes, you can get some discomfort there. We want to be able to have the eyelids be able to move up and down, uh, keeping some lubricant to the eyes. So we want to be able to look down. We don't want to be staring straight out in front and or looking up. We want to avoid neck pain. We want to avoid eye strain. Usually this is about an arm's length away from you. Some of you may need to have two monitors you're working with. You want to have each one set up in the proper way as we just discussed. You want to have them close enough so you don't have a lot of movement back and forth. If your monitor doesn't move up and down like that, find something to support it, raise it up with uh, books, uh, reams of paper, something to make sure that you have the monitor at the, at the proper height. You may have a number of other items that you need to work with on your tabletop. You may have to copy off of uh, paper, uh, you want to have a stand there set up and you want to have it as close to you as possible to minimize movement of the head and neck. You want to make sure that you can see it properly. You don't want to push your head and neck forward. Likewise, it depends on what you're using for uh, your telephone. Uh, whatever technology you want to use, you want to make sure you're always going to be hands free. You do not want to put a phone, if you listen from the left side, you don't want to have it pinched between the, your head, your face, and your shoulder, definitely that could cause some pain. So hands-free with whatever you're using with the telephone. What if you have a laptop? How do you work with that? You want to keep in mind, do the best you can with everything we just went through on your, as close to perfect as possible with your setup. Now, unfortunately, the keyboard may be a little bit smaller, you're going to be cramped, it's going to be difficult for you to sit tall all the time. Your tendency will be to want to slouch down, which could give you some upper back discomfort and or some neck discomfort. You may need some additional support here so you don't get pressure on the wrists from the laptop. Just consider everything we've done with the PC and look to support yourself properly with your laptop. If you're able to get an external keyboard, if you're able to get an external mouse, that'd be great. You'd be able then to put your, uh, your, your screen up on a stand. They sell those just for that purpose. And you're able to use everything we've talked about here with your PC. So you're working with your laptop on your desktop. You could have a little problem with the edge of your laptop rubbing into your wrist. You may consider a support. In fact, how I'm set up here, I probably would want to sit a little higher. This is as high as this chair goes, so I probably want to put a book underneath me to raise this up a bit so my arm is a little bit more at 90 degrees, the elbow, and I don't get pressure on the wrist from the edge of this. But your situation, you look at that and do a little thinking with how could I improve what I have here. That's one way you can improve that. Give you some su support under here so you don't put pressure on there from this position of going up and then coming down. Let's also consider, no matter whether it's a laptop or your PC monitor, consider glare. We want to get rid of glare. That could really give you great fatigue to your eyes. So position yourself to avoid glare. Likewise, every few minutes, it could be every 10, 15 minutes, turn a little bit, look off into the distance because of fatigue you can get from looking real close. Let's talk about some things you can do to help make yourself feel better. Obviously, you want to be able to stand up. Sometimes you're working. I've known folks that have been in front of the computer for four or five hours and they haven't moved. That can definitely contribute to some problems. Standing up, putting your hands at your low back, just doing a very simple stretch that you do normally when you're sitting for a too long period of time. Putting your arms back, doing the best you can with that. If you already have some problems at your back and your shoulders, just do what you can. But we want to open up across the front at the chest of the shoulders. We also want to give some relief to the arms. We could stretch backward in that position. We could stretch into flexion or bending in this position with some turning to help relax and stretch the muscles through the forearm. Just opening and closing. Standing tall, 
turning the neck right and left, and or maybe even doing a little bit of the, a chin tuck to counter postures. Even if you're doing your best to pay attention to posture and alignment, it's very easy to slouch as you're progressing along your, di your day. Try to remind yourself, some people even have a timer there to, to remind themselves of proper alignment and when to get up and when to move. But sitting in front of your computer for hours and hours isn't good. I've known some folks that also have had a laptop and done work sitting in bed, slouched over their laptop, and they've asked me, why do they hurt? Some obvious reasons there. Position yourself the best you can, following all the things we've talked about. Go to the site, National Institute of Health site, has some wonderful things related to how to set up. I think we've pretty much covered all those areas and hopefully we've covered the areas you want to hear about based on what you've told me in the past, what hurts you and what's good and bad for your positioning in front of the computer. Good luck to you with that. Be safe.